Well, we are all so excited for the Cheltenham Festival here at Sporting Life, and you are going to be getting some great content uh, coming your way on sportinglife.com over the next few days. And a real treat for you now because we have uh, three industry leading tipsters, columnists at the Sporting Life, who are going to provide their best bets for each day of the Cheltenham Festival. Graham Cunningham, Ben Linfoot, and Matt Brocklebank. Good to see you, lads. I, I know you are all very excited for the Cheltenham Festival. I think it's probably fair to say the Irish are excited for the Cheltenham Festival because when you look at the recent records of the, the Irish runners in comparison to the, to the British runners, it very much has been an Irish domination. 23-5 in terms of the winners at Cheltenham last year. And when you look at the championship races, uh, particularly in the champion hurdle and the Gold Cup in the last 10 years, it has very much been uh, the Irish who have held sway. Do we expect, GC, that to be the case once again? Yes, we do. Uh, we do. Maybe not 23, maybe 20 or 21. Uh, but if Britain don't get off to a good start on Tuesday, Ben, uh, they're going to need snookers pretty quickly, aren't they? They could get off to a good start, though. <laughs> We've got Constitution Hill, John Bond in the Sky Bit Supreme. A couple of likely players in the, in the Sporting Life article, Edward Stone and, uh, and maybe one or two outsiders. So I'm thinking we're going to fight back a little bit. 19-9 I'm going for. OK. He's not sold me. Uh, no, I, I think it's going to be a real, real domination, uh, Oli. I don't, don't really believe a lot of what I've been reading about uh, the handicaps as well. I think uh, the Irish are definitely going to dominate in that sphere as well. We're going to get you to give your best bet on each day. Um, have you got your, your sort of value bet hat on for these? Uh, are there are a few at big prices. Oh, absolutely, Oli. Yeah. There's been a few raised eyebrows, famous eyebrows as well, in the racing game uh, <laughs> already today. Is he I've looking said, at you there? I've said never heard of him <laughs> or her several times. <laughs> Um, okay, so a few big prices, which is good, and that's what the, the, the punters like. So let's kick things off. Day one, best bets. Obviously, the feature race, the champion hurdle, the Sky Bet Supreme is a phenomenal race on paper. We've got the Sporting Life Arkle as well. Who are you going for for your best bet on day one? I think it's the last race on the card, National Hunt Chase, in aid of the Ukraine appeal. Great cause, obviously. Gordon Elliott's got a superb record in that race. Fantastic record. And Run Wild Fred looks tailor-made. Gordon Elliott, he's not an extrovert in quotes, but he said very early on, this horse has National Hunt Chase written all over him. People say he's had 10 chases. Eight, nine, 10 chases is a big advantage in that race, mm. being seasoned. It's a hard school. He jumps really well. I think he's got a rating golly of 158, official rating. That's higher than any of the last 10 winners of that race brought in. So he's got the goods. He stays very well. Uh, he jumps very well, bar one mistake at Leopardstown last time. I think he's gonna have Jamie Codd on board. I'd be amazed if he doesn't go really close. He finished miles clear of Vanillier as well last time, didn't he? He's his third favourite in the race. So run wild, Fred, for you. Scoot, where are you looking for your best bet on day one? I'm looking at the Sporting Life Arkle, Ollie, and I'm taking on Edward Stone. I, I think he's a very good horse, Edward Stone, but I'm happy to have a go at him each way. I don't think he's a superstar. I don't think there's a superstar in the race. And my angle on the first day is I think it's probably going to be the softest ground of the week on the first day. There's a little bit of rain forecast. I think they'll probably water as well. And uh, I think that brings my selection into it. Brave Tiaska for Venetia Williams, who confirmed him for the race uh, only the other day. And well, Why should he turn this form around? Well, it's Edward Stone in front and Brave Tiaska disputing second on yeah, the far side. And Edward Stone gave him five pounds this day um, and beat him five and, and three quarter lengths. But I thought this was another good performance from Brave Tiaska on, on ground that wouldn't have suited him whatsoever. It was pretty much good ground this day and I'm hoping conditions are softer at Cheltenham because if you look at his soft ground record in isolation he's a very very good novice. A very good jumper as well. Isn't really it? good jumper so I, th I don't think he's out of it by any means and I just think 20 to 1 on the basis that he can perhaps turn that farmer around with the ground in his favour is just a little bit too big for me. Can I just add a caveat to this and I think it's probably pretty obvious in terms of what you're saying would you fancy him if it was good ground on day one? No. No, so I'm, I'm it's, it's, ground it's very much a ground-based play, right. and I'm hoping that there's going to be significant cut on the first day. Okay. Are you in the Edward Stone camp, just out of interest? I really like him, and w the reason I'd like to see him run well or win is he's had five runs, Ollie, and that's very unusual for a grade one horse at Cheltenham now, and you want to see that sort of boldness rewarded. But uh, he's a crackerjack horse, but he's not invincible by any means. I thought Magic Days, who a lot of people are tipping up, would run well. She was second in the Mayor's Novice last year. Um, Matt, where are you going on day one? I am going into one of the handicaps. This will be one of my only sort of early handicap bets at this stage, into the Ultima handicap chase. Um, talk of Irish domination. This isn't a race that they've done particularly well in recent seasons. They only had eight runners over the past three seasons in total. It appears that they're going to have 
half the field this time around so I think uh, dangers abound for the Brits in this race quite a few old familiar faces but what we've got here is um, a horse in death duty who Gordon Elliott's talking out about in really uh, positive terms, thinks he's well handicapped. Well, he's one of the market leaders. I'm going to go elsewhere with Dr. Duffy because if you look back at the race last time out, Dr. Duffy was going really nicely just on the heels of death duty. I think he'd have given him a, a really good race at Punchestown in the Grand National Trial. Um, and he comes in off very similar mark. He's a, he's a very typical Charles Burns type project, I'd say. Last time round, last season, he was given a real summer campaign. He ran a lot uh, in the summertime. Um, they tried to get him qualified for the uh, the Potemps final. He finished eighth, and it's happened again. He's finished eighth in another Potemps final. So I think they're being forced down the chase route. But his uh, his chase record's pretty tidy, actually. A nice little strike rate over over fences. I'd be look on the lookout as well for another potential headgear switch. He's uh, running cheap pieces the last three times he's, we've seen him. But That's visor. A good point. That I think nine of the last ten winners of that race have worn some form of headgear, either cheek pieces um, or uh, blinkers, I think. Just last year, his first two runs in a visor really perked him up. He won twice in the visor. I'd love to see blinkers or the visor back on. What sort of price are we looking for here? Oh, he'll be, he's 20, 25 to one already. Um, hopefully that price holds up and he can feature in the Valley Bet column and we can all toast Charles Burns. It won't hold up then when it features <laughs> in the value bet column. That'll be, that'll be gone quickly. Um, good luck with those selections on the first day. Turning our attentions to day two now, the Queen Mother Champion Chase obviously being the feature race, and remarkably, given he's won pretty much everything there is ever in the sport of horse racing, Willie Mullins, it eludes in the Champion Chase. Do we think that this year will be the year that he finally gets his hand on, hands on the trophy? I think it might be. We're taking on a formidable horse in Shishkin, but he's a formidable horse at four to six in a race where lots of bankers have blown out. So I, I'd, I'd look sort of after the race, what will be my reaction if an Ergamine wins at four to one or nine to two and I've left him alone and I'd, I'd be really annoyed, Ollie. We know he's a terrific course. Look at those time form ratings for the big three. 181 for Shishkin, 180 an Ergamine, 179 Chacon Porsoir. This is a race, the best two mile race we've seen for many moons. And there's that much between them on the Ascot form. Shishkin in last year's article was absolutely dominant, but we didn't have an Ergamine here on this day, Ben. Um, he had a setback. Let's hope he makes it next week. He's not had a completely trouble-free preparation by the sound of things. No, obviously the, the stone bros uh, with an Ergamine. Uh, let's just hope. We see this Shishkin winning here, the, the Spot and Life article last year. Let's hope he turns up in great form and an Ergamine turns up in great form and Shaken because it could be the race of the week, the best we've sort of seen in this race in Moscow Flyers, Ertiop, World Chief era. We're talking those sort of numbers. It would be fantastic. Let's hope they all get there. It's just a price thing for me, Ollie. Uh, I'm completely prepared to see Shishkin win well. But why would you not go with Shaq and Poussoir then, from a price perspective? Because he was eight or nine to one not too long ago, and nibble, 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 he's down to four to one or nine to two. I don't hold the Cheltenham thing against him. I, I he stopped the video between the last two fences last year and he was going to win it really, really handy. So I don't think it's a track thing. But what about the travel into UK thing with the Tingle Creek in mind? He's never done it in England. Possibly. It's just on my mind. It's only, it's only twice. Yeah. He's 10 now and Ergamine should be absolutely in his pomp. Uh, Shaq and Poussoir is a hell of a good horse and I probably will save on him. I know I'm taking on a potential monster. Uh, but those three horses are very tightly matched on form, so it's an ergamine for me. And in a word, who are you with? I think Ascot was the, uh, the chance for an ergamine. I'd be with Shishkin. Okay. Uh, best bets on day two. Scoop, I'm going to start with you, if that's all right. Who are you siding with for your best bet? Of the, of Do you know day? what? I struggled with Wednesday. I thought this was the toughest day because you've, you've got the champion chase, haven't you? We, we've, just, we've just talked about. And then you've got some really tricky handicaps uh, as well. And obviously, at this stage, we don't know the final fears for grade ones like the, the Festival Novices Chase. What, who's Brave Man's game going to take on, for example? So I've gone for the Grand Annual <laughs> and the, uh, the two-mile handicap chase that closes the card. And a horse called Gumball who has switched from Philip Hobbs's to, to Fergal O'Brien's and he, he is one of these British horses that has been given a chance by the handicapper. 148 when he arrived at Fergal O'Brien's, three quick runs before Christmas down to 140 and been kept back for this ever since. He hasn't got Cheltenham Festival form but he's got Cheltenham form. He was second in a great wood hurdle beating a neck off a mark of 147 so he's seven pounds lower than that. He's a He's, he's a good jumper in the main. I know last year when he was a novice, he got caught out, you know, tried to chase Shishkin home, etc. 
but um, I think he's well treated and uh, he'll do for me around 25 to 1 each way in the grand yeah. annual. Gumball in the grand annual for, for, for Scoop. What about you, Matt? Well, I'm going into, I'm going to have a shot at the Ballymore, Ollie, and I think really important to stress at this point is uh, confidence will kind of either swell or diminish depending what happens in the Supreme and you've got to think about like that as a punter you've got to be nimble through the week if Nicky Henderson has the winner of the Skybet Supreme we know he's got he thinks he's got a really crackerjack set of novices and if that's the case if he's beaten the Irish in that my confidence will increase quite a bit in this I am Maximus in the Ballymore novices hurdle now I think plan A might well have been to go for the Coral Cup that down the handicap route um, he's he's as it happens, he's only got a mark of 134. I think that vastly underrate, underrates the horse. Too um, well handicapped for the course. Too well handicapped. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> As we speak, he's number 82 on the list. He's no chance of getting in. So I think the hand's going to be forced a little bit down into the grade one company. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a stiff ass for a young horse with not a huge amount of experience. But I think he's probably going to be better served by this race than a big field Coral Cup anyway. Um, and I really liked the run against Hillcrest uh, last time out when we saw him at Charlton. Don't forget Hillcrest in the Albert Bartlett is favourite. He's 3-1, to 7-2. This is a horse that's 16, 20-1. to one. I think he can run a big price at, um, race at an each-way price. Okay, I'm Maximus in the Ballymore. Thank you for that, Matt. What about you, GC? I like Frero Bamboo in that grand annual chase. I think he'll run well for Venetia Williams. But my bet is going to be an argument. Like Ben, I found Wednesday a really tricky uh, punting card to be confident about the shape of a few races. But um, I'm a massive an argument fan. And if he and Shishkin and perhaps Shaq and Passoir and rolling down that hill together, that will be the highlight of the week. Uh, I'm making notes, as I hope everyone at home is as well, uh, watching, watching this. Uh, those are the thoughts from the, the panel on the first two days. Obviously, day three is Stayers Hurdle Day, but also has the Ryanair. Many people, I'm sure, will be putting Alaho in their, in their tickets as one of the bankers of the week. I know that Willie Mullins is incredibly confident, understandably, about his chances. Before we get your best bets, does anyone have a strong view in what is an open stairs? I, I know from speaking to you, actually, Graham, you've got an interesting angle regarding lack of crowds versus crowd for a couple of the big players. Yeah, there are complex characters in this race, highly talented, but complex characters. Classical Dream is a fireball. He's very, very strong, and he absolutely thrived in lockdown. No crowds around, landed a big gamble at Punchestown, hardly a soul around. And likewise at Leopardstown over Christmas when he shot the start and made all. He beat Flooring Porter, who is likewise a, a suitable case for treatment. He thrived <laughs> at Cheltenham last spring with hardly a soul around. He went off like the Duracell bunny and he just beat out those fast fractions all the way. But he's mercurial. Um, Paisley Park has won this race. He's a tremendously strong stayer. But he almost refused it's to race. the opposite to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, he almost refused to race last time. So you will be... You know, you'll be just closing your eyes for a minute before I could the pop start. Pop another there. on that list, GC. We don't know the final plans right now, but a steering for launch. Yeah, again, another mercurial character. So um, I'm playing safe with Time Hill, who's been steadily back for the last few days, and he's got high quality form. He's a proven Grade One horse. He goes very well at Cheltenham, and I think if the others wilt in any way, and with sixty thousand Herberts shouting and cheering, <laughs> I'm not convinced about. <laughs> Um, classical Dream, Flooring Porter. I've, I've jumped that ship and I've jumped onto the Time Hill Express. Who do you fancy? Well, my best bet for the day is in the Staters. It ties in so nicely. It ties in lovely, Ollie. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I love GC's nut job theory. I'm taking them all on <laughs> as well. Is that what it's called? Well, what we're calling it? Yeah, Crackpot scheme. We, we, could call it, we could call it that. Um, you know, so much importance is on the start in this race isn't it when you think of what Paisley Park did in the in the uh, Cleve hurdle last time if he does that at the festival we see him coming up the hill here having lost 15 lengths at the start you know if he gets off on terms he's probably going to be coming home strongly he's dependent on a strong pace as well um, this day unbelievably everything fell into his lap champs on the far side there I think he could run a good race in mm, this day as hurdle um, but all the market leaders they need a good start, they need a sh strong gallop, a lot of them. I think s so much has to go into their favour that I'm happy to take them on with something fresh in the division. I'm going for champ's owner, mate, Sporting John, trained by Philip Hobbs, right. who is a seven-year-old who's five from seven over hurdles. He's got excuses for his two defeats, particularly this season when he was beaten in a handicap hurdle at Cheltenham in, at the December meeting. It just came too soon after the November meeting. He's a horse that needs time between his races. I like, since he reverted to hurdles, I, I love his technique. He just skips over one. And um, I think he's a real 
improver in the division. You're going two for the price of one here, aren't you? Because you've got two options for that horse. Well, you're playing both charge. I, I think so, JC, <laughs> because he's in the Potemps on the same day, on the same course. Right. You're playing both charge. So, <laughs> Philip Pops hasn't made the decision yet if, uh, if he's going for the handicap or the grade one. He's rated 155. I'd love to see him in the grade one. I think he's got a huge chance. But obviously, by that logic, if he ends up in the Potemps off 155, I think he's a player in that too. But I'm going to go stayers. I'm going to go spot and jump. Best bet Thursday. Uh, Matt, what's your best bet on, on Thursday? I am going with Impervious in the Ryanair Mares Novices Hurdle. Um, she's a, we've not seen her for a while. I think it could be one of those festivals, couldn't, couldn't it? The real sort of comeback kings. We've got a lot of horses coming in here fresh. And I think it was a deliberate ploy, keep her back for the springtime, because she was going through the grades really nicely for Cole Murphy when we last saw her. So much so that a young novice like her, he, he ran her in, uh, in the grade one, the, the Royal Bond. Um, and it turned into a farce of a race, an absolute farce. I think you can scrap it. Um, she would have been placed if it wasn't for the bad mistake at the last hurdle anyway. Way, um, but it was a farce of a race. They went no gallop whatsoever, and she wasn't suited to that at all. Having previously been winning over two miles three, two miles four, you know, she wants that good gallop, and I think that is the real key to this race: is that really long, lengthy run between the second last and the last. Um, you don't want a speed horse in this race, despite the fact that it only being two miles one furlong. You want a horse that can really come, th go through the gears and stretch. Um, and obviously, Willie Mullins. What we're going to ha have here is his B team, aren't we? I think Allegory Davasi was number one for them. Brandy Love, major question marks about her. She's, I see she's been a bit, a li little bit of a drifter in the betting as well. Um, so I think we might end up with the Mullins B team. I know the vibes are positive about Dino Blue. Mm. Really inexperienced horse, her. I'll take her on with Impervious. Uh, impervious, uh, a player for Matt in, in, in that race. What, what's your strong fancy on day three? Matt's going Impervious and I'm going Imperial. Imperial Alcazar in the Paddy Power Plate. Like him. I think this horse is well handicapped. I've got previous with him. I had a really good bet on him for the uh, Potemps last yeah. year. Went off a fairly short price in the end. He got struck into. Right. Didn't get a chance to show his form. He didn't click immediately over fences. I thought he was a bit ponderous at Chepstow over Christmas. He went to Cheltenham last time. He was mustered. His jumping was right on it. Dropping back in trip yeah. helped him that day. Yeah. In Faster pace. Yeah. And he dominated some good young chasers. He won by a wide margin. I thought he'd go up 12, Ollie. Went up 8 to a mark of 152. I, th I think he's a type of horse who could definitely get to grade 2 level right. in time. Novices, lightly raced chasers, have a very good record in this race. There'll be several others with broadly similar profiles. Um, but I think this might be one for the Brits. Uh, with Imperial Alcazar it's for those well-known Brits, Fergal O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because that uh, Novices Handicap Chase he won on Trials Day, such a good record yes. going into the Cheltenham Festival. We've lost the Novices Handicap Chase from the festival, mm. but it could still have a, a big well, bearing on... It could help thing. because you're a very lightly raced improver going in yeah, against yeah. a field with more exposed horses. I, I do like him. He would be one of my uh, keener options for the week. Uh, and was the big difference goes without saying but just his efficiency from A to B over his obstacles yeah, last time he out. was bold and accurate and he came up that hill like a lion so I think he I think he's got a hell of a lot of upside that horse. Well, if the glancing queen ran in there she's yeah. another one in that category she's of horses that could do well in yeah, an improver yeah. yeah absolutely um the the big race on day four as we know it's the blue ribbon of the week uh, the gold cup and we're going to have a look at the time form ratings now for that race and there are cases to be made for well, all of them, I think it's fair to say. It's a wide open uh, gold cup. Aplutard heads the ratings, uh, the weight adjusted ratings, courtesy of Timeform, with a mark of uh, 185, a rating of 183 for last year's winner, Manella Rindo. Dual winner of the race, Album Photo, hoping to regain the crown, which isn't easy to do. 179, along with Galvin, who was a winner at the festival last year. King George winner, I think still is probably a bit underestimated, actually. 178, Chantry House conflated. Will he run there or will he go uh, for the Ryanair? as per his owner's wishes, 177, and then you get down to Protectorat, who's got a, a, a 173 time form weight adjusted rating. Th that, so the sort of compression, relative compression in that gives you an indication as to, to just how open it is. Is that fair? I, I'm not sure it is. I, I was of that opinion, Ollie, and the more I look at the race, the more I think it's the Gold Cup. There are only certain calibre of horse rise to that challenge. Don't think it's going to be a wild gallop this year, but the horses who are one, two, three. 12 months ago. They're all back. You can make a case for all of them. I like Galvin. 
I think he's just getting good at the right time and he's a very, very strong stayer. But based on Leopard's down form, there's precious little between him and A. Plutard. I think a dry week would definitely favour A. Plutard and if there was some rain it would favour Galvin. But uh, I think it might be just like Leopardstown and those two coming up the hill and uh, may the best horse win. Uh, who wins the Gold Cup down the line? I'm a long way from firming up my Gold Cup thoughts. <laughs> All right, I'll leave you. All right. No, no, I think, it, I think the picture could, could change when we know the final field. I'd love to see Conflated in it. I think he, he'd have a good chance in the Gold Cup. I, I, I couldn't have him beating Alaho in the Ryanair chase, but I think he's, he's fresh blood in the division. He's an improving stayer. He's improved loads since Gordon Elliott took the hood off. Is he an improving stayer, though? Because he well, won <laughs> the Irish Gold Cup on speed in a steadily run race. But you've just said it yourself. There might not be a wild gallop here. And he could, e he could easily hunt round and, and use his two and a half mile pace in the race. I, I honestly think he's that sort of horse. I'd love to see him in there. He'd probably run in the Ryanair and this will be irrelevant. But that's why I'm saying I'm not quite firmed up my Gold Cup thoughts yet. Aplutard, absolutely the right favourite, the right top rated. Um, but it just concerns me that horses coming back from a defeat in the Gold Cup the following year, they very, very rarely go on and do it. He's still a young horse. I'm, I'm with A. Plutard. A bit like GC, um, when people say it's an open Gold Cup, you, you kind of sometimes think, well, uh, is it or can a lot of these not win a Gold Cup? And I think that's the way I'm going to look at it. I, I'd be just about with A. Plutard. It looked like to me at Leopardstown that was a one that got away. It, it, yeah. the, the A. Plutard at Haydock was lethal. Isn't it crackers that none of us have mentioned last year's winner? Uh, and, and, and I think the public might take a similar view that, it, that it'll be a bit of a forgotten horse, but his record, Manila Rendo, yeah. at the <laughs> festival is mustard. He was a gamble last year as well. Overnight, he had quickly, obviously what happened with Henry's horses through the week, they were on fire. He went from 14 to seven or eight mm. overnight. Can we um, just whiz through your best bets on day four? So down the line very quickly, GC. I like this one in the Triumph Hurdle, Phil Dore for Gordon Elliott. Um, look back in time, Gordon's won the Triumph twice, Ollie. First one was Tiger Roll. He finished second in that big juvenile hurdle at Leopardstown in February. Went on to win the Triumph, beating the horse who beat him at Leopardstown. He won the triumph with Farclass, who was second in the Leopardstown race, went on to win the triumph and beat the horse who'd beat him at Leopardstown. I'm looking for history to repeat itself. I know that Volban is a very fast horse. I know that Willie Mullins has enormous plans for him that stretch maybe towards the Melbourne Cup. Oh, domination. <laughs> yeah, the triumph hurdle is an unusual race. I hope we get a big feel this time. Hope we get some rain. He's a very good jumper. He stays very strongly and he tries very hard indeed. I think you're going to need a mallet to keep Phil Dore out of the first three in the triumph hurdle. Very strong words. Matt? Well, I promised Dark Horses, Ollie. Um, I'll go with the nice guy in the Albert Bartlett and obviously Hurdle. Haven't heard a great deal spoken about this horse, trained by Willie Mullins of all people, uh, owned by Malcolm Denmark, really lightly raced horse. He's a seven year old, didn't make it to the track last year, but as Willie revealed after he won his maiden, he was in training throughout. So I think he's a bit more seasoned, a bit more experienced maybe than uh, his profile appears, but he was uh, absolutely an easy winner of a two mile three uh, hurdle race first time out. He, he's very unusual to be going for, for an Albert Bartlett. He's not proven over three miles, but I think he could be the most talented horse in this race. And Scoot? I'm going for a big outsider rally. Freedom to dream in the Martin Pipe, final race of the festival. Uh, Peter Fay, who won the uh, county hurdle last year with Belfast Banter, has got this horse. He's got appreciated form. He's got form in the Limerick Novice Hurdle at Christmas, which is a, a great source of festival winners, and they ran in a grade one at the Dublin Racing Festival last time. He's in off 135. I think he'll just sneak in. Big prize, 33s and upwards. OK, we've heard the case for your best four then. I want you to pick out the, the, the best of the best four, if you can. We'll go down the line. GC. Phil Dore. Oh, you're very keen on that, I can tell that. Scoop. Sporting John in his selected race on Thursday. Playing both sides. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt. I'll go for Impervious. I really like Cole Murphy. Lo liked loads of his horses over the years. Brave Inca, Big Zeb, uh, Vola Labadette. I'll go with Impervious. And just finally, uh, and we don't have too much time to go into detail with it, but I'm sure you guys will be writing about the outsider you expect mm. to run well. So give us a name that you'll be writing about next week. Well, older viewers will remember Cyril Griffiths winning the Gold Cup with Norton's coin. He's at the top of the farming training power rankings, but just behind uh, Anne and Ian Hamilton, and they have Tommy's Oscar in the champion hurdle. And I'm seeing value in him that other people aren't seeing, and I like it. I like going against the crowd. I think he can arrive late, maybe not beat Honeysuckle, but certainly be on the podium. Scoop. 
I'm going to have to go with May out of the ballpark, Freedom to Dream in the final race of the festival. Have to wait 28 races. Yeah. 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 Well, I <laughs> know that I've still got something running yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> when everything goes wrong throughout the week, I've still got one in the left. The scooter fans will stay loyal. <laughs> Britain could be naught for 27 by then. Yeah. <laughs> and Matt? Well, I've tipped up the nice guy, so I've got to go with as well. He's a hardy bloke. That's one you'd like, GC. Yep. Uh, I, th I suspect he might run in the Martin Pipe. He also has an entry in the Coral Cup. Um, it wasn't seen to best effect around Leopardstown last time out. He came around nine horses wide on the turn for him. Uh, guys, many thanks. I love reading your stuff. It's, it's always, well, a lot of the time, most of the time, it's on the money. So thank you for your thoughts uh, with us here today. And indeed, thank you for your thoughts coming up next week. You can see all of their thoughts, their ex uh, extended thoughts on those races at sportinglife.com. And I promise you, over the course of the four days at the festival, it is the place you need to log into to check for all your festival info. It is second to none. I hope you uh, enjoy it with us on sportinglife.com and have a very, very happy Cheltenham Festival. <laughs>